am back with my second Puppy Whip It training lesson. We're going to speak about motivation or talk about motivation. Now, the first thing is let's define what motivation is in terms of dog training. Motivation is something that in the dog's perception he's willing to work for. In other words, it's something that motivates him to do something again. So a principle of positive reinforcement, which we use a lot in dog training is, dog does something, something happens, and because something happens that's positive or that he deems as being positive, he's more willing to do it again. So when you're looking at motivators in training, you have to look at it from the dog's perspective. What are they willing to work for? The first obvious motivator is food. But the first thing I need to tell you about food is, food is not a motivator if your dog is not truly hungry. So one of the premises of training is, train your dog before you feed him. Train him right before you feed him dinner, train him for first, time, first thing in the morning, train him when he's really hungry. And the hungrier he is, the better your results will be. One example is, one time I got a whippet puppy back that had been in a home where she hadn't really been trained much and she wasn't very social and she wouldn't look me in the eye she didn't come to me and i thought this dog she's going to be dangerous because she doesn't come to people so what i did was i actually hand fed her for a period of two to three weeks and she came to me for just about every bite of food now that really turned that dog around now i wasn't was i starving her no she had free choice and that's another piece you need to remember is whenever you use food or anything with a dog is they have free choice. They can choose whether to work for the food or whether not to work for the food. So they do have free choice. So getting to food. Now, you wanna always train with at least two or three different kinds of treats because usually what happens is just like if you're eating dinner and if you were just gonna eat the same main meal every day, you get kind of bored. Um, Whereas normally what do you have? You have a meat, some vegetables, some other things like that. So you move around and it's the same thing with training. So you want a couple of different kinds of treats. Secondly, once again, what is the dog willing to work for? It's gotta be a treat that they like. And then third, it's gotta be a treat that they can eat fairly quickly because a lot of your training goes very quickly. You're giving them little tidbits and little tidbits and little tidbits. And so you want um, the food to be either soft or something they can chew. So I've got a couple different things. Now, in here, I've got two different things. One, these are really not soft, but I would normally probably soak them in water, or I would give them as what I call a terminal treat when I give the dog a couple minutes to rest and they can chew this up. These are little cat treats, and they like them. They're like salmon cat treats. <laughs> and then secondly, this stuff, this is actually kennel ration. If you've ever seen that kennel ration, it does have a lot of sugar in the food. It's what the military actually used to train their uh, dogs um, and because dogs like it but um, I would not give a lot of it but I certainly do use them as treats because they're soft and they're easy to break up for me and now the other obvious choices I have is I have a hot dog this is actually a cheese hot dog Oscar Mayer um, I got turkey hot dogs I got beef I got cheese I got a couple different kinds and you'll notice that you really want to cut them up into small pieces this is almost too big um, you want them to be about little pea size like that. Now, it's hard for me to handle the really little ones, so I do tend to make them a little bit bigger, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll hold them so that the dog doesn't get the whole treat. Or sometimes I'll just give them the whole treat. Um, I've also cut up hot dogs like this, long, slender kind of pieces, because there are going to be some exercises where I want to lure the dog, and I want to have a big piece for them to follow down, and then I let them chew off the end of it, and that's how I work with them. Pepperoni. Never had a dog refuse pepperoni. They love pepperoni. String cheese. Same thing. They love string cheese. And I've got the long pieces. And then I've also got little teeny chunks you can see that I've cut up. So you want a variety of food and you'll find out what the dog works for. Now the second thing that you need to think about with food is you have, we well, have kind of like first level and then high uh, high reward treats and low reward. You've got the, the treats that they'll eat and they kind of like them, then you got the stuff they'll die for. Liver tends to be something, if you bake some liver and you chop it up, a lot of dogs they'll do anything for liver. Some dogs, it's that string cheese. 
That's what I found tends to be my higher level treat is the string cheese. So try to use a couple of different kinds of treats, have like a really high reward level treat or high, highly motivating treat, and then have a typical one that they know they're kind of getting fed. Now, how many treats do you use when you train them? You want to use, um, you don't want to use so much that you give them any more than like a quarter of their daily ration of food to a third at the most. And once again, watch their stools. <laughs> That's a really easy thing. If you're giving them a lot of treats and they start having, you know, soft stools or diarrhea, then you know you've given them too much. And the other thing that you can do is if they're really hungry, is you can take their dog food ahead of time, put it in some hot water, stick it in the fridge, go to work, and when you come home, you can start out by actually feeding them their dog food. So that way you can keep their diet, you know, fairly, um, fairly good. There's a lot of treats on the market, so you need to be, as I said, is I, I'm kind of careful because I don't want to feed them a whole bunch of junk. So just be careful about what you feed them for, for treats and just make sure, um, once again, that it's something that do doesn't make them sick or give them, give them uh, soft stools, things like that. So treats, that's one motivator, or food. The other thing I want you to think about is what else motivates your puppy? Well, with my puppies, it's toys, it's play. So when I work with my dogs, a lot of times I'll get some little things, like they like these little things. Remember, you got them in your little puppy packets. Now, they normally have a squeaker that works, but I just put it through the wash so the squeaker's dead. Little squeaky toys or things that make noises that they like to grab that you can throw for them, that you can play with them. That's great. This is kind of stuff that you can use when you're actually in a training class. You know, I have bigger things. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is at the end of a session, I'll try to play with them with something like this. Balls work really well, like tennis balls. Um, these little rabbit things, you know, whippets always like the little rabbits. And once again, these squeak. <laughs> and then finally, I sometimes like to get some kind of a tug toy because it's a really good idea to teach your dog to tug a war. Um, it's a, a way to really get them motivated. And they, you know, whippets, you know, they're prey dogs, they're prey driven. So tug of war is a fun game. Sometimes it takes a bit to teach them how to tug of war, but it's a good motivation tool to, to do that. So we're not only, only talking about toys, but we're talking about play with you. So you are a motivator. And people forget that, that for dogs, most dogs, human touch is a motivator. You pet them, good boy. Now they're good pets and they're not so good pets. You need to figure out what your Whippet puppy likes. What kind of pet does he like? Does he like to be scratched behind here? Does he like a tummy rub? Does he like to be kind of roughhoused a little bit? Or does he like just a nice soft stroke and eye contact? So eye contact is another motivator. For most dogs, eye contact is a motivator. It's attention. So a lot of times I will use eye contact in a soft voice, a positive voice, because they've usually associated that with food or something else good, like touching, um, as a motivator. It doesn't always have to be food. Um, it can be something they want. Say they want to go out. Make them do something before you let them out the door. The motivation is the ability to do something else. Some people call that the pre-MAC principle, but basically the ability to go and leave or freedom. So freedom is a motivator. You want them to, to uh, be quiet, to let them out of the crate and they're whining. Wait until they're quiet, then open the door to the crate. So think about things like doors, gates, other things like that, the ability to get into something, into a special room, onto a couch, onto things like that. Those are all potential motivators um, to help you as far as training them to do things. And sometimes it's training them to have self-control. They have to sit and wait before you let them out. They have to sit or they have to lie down before you let them up on the couch or in your lap. Being in your lap is a motivator. So I want you to be thinking about these because these are also unintentional motivators. In other words, a lot of times people will tell me, well, my puppy jumps, you know, and he's jumping up on my all the time and I'm telling him no. And I say, what are you doing when you're telling him no? I'm taking him and I'm pushing him down. Well, touch, attention, eye contact, they're motivators. So you got a puppy that jumps on you and you just take him and push him down somewhat nicely, you're actually reinforcing the behavior. You got a puppy that um, is excitable and once again, um, if you're gonna use touch, I hate to say it, if you're going to use physical punishment, 
It has to be enough that it's not a motivator and it has to be at that level where it really discourages them and they're like, I don't like that kind of touch. But we'll talk about that later. But for right now, just remember, um, if you're watching behaviors that your dog does that you don't really like, start thinking about what is motivating him. What's happening? What's that reward that comes immediately when after he does it um, that, that uh, is motivating him to continue to do the behavior you don't want him to do? And then finally, um, a point about uh, motivation and, and motivators is that you can, uh, once again, is unintentionally train a dog to do the things that you don't, you don't want him to do by you know, inadvertently rewarding him. So figure out what the reward system is you know, when that's happening. And next we're going to talk about clicker training.